All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. Tonight is Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. This meeting is being held virtually in accordance with the governor's executive order. Ellen, may we have roll call, please? Yes, Mr. Carey. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Good evening, Ellen. I'm here. Mrs. Evans? I'm here. Mrs. Granado? Present. Mr. Lesser? Here. Mr. Michaels? Here. Mrs. Paradise? She's here. Here, here. I forgot to unmute. No problem. Mr. Riley? Here. Vice Chair, Mr. Healy? Here. Chairperson, Mr. Carey? Present. And Weathersfield High School student representative, Tiago Wynn? Here. All present. Thank you, Ellen. If we could all rise and we'll have Mr. Craig, the principal of Webb School, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Hey, thank you. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and, and to the republic, republic which, which stands, stands, one nation, one nation under God, God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, 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 and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Mr. Emmett, student and staff recognition. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Kerry. Good evening, everyone. I am uh, pleased to have a student recognition this evening. I'd like to turn the meeting over to our principal at Webb Elementary School, Mr. Ken Craig. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for having us this evening. Uh, I'm very proud and pleased to recognize a young third grader at Webb School. Uh, her name is Avery McMahon. She's with us this evening. She's joined with her mother, uh, Jennifer, and her father, Kevin, who are both very proud. Also proudly here tonight, her teacher, Miss, uh, Mrs. Mary Ann Olson, who's in attendance as well. So um, she uh, has been awarded quite the honor this month. She entered a national poetry competition uh, put on by the folks at uh, Creative Communications. Uh, the, the competition is called Poetic Power um, and many, many entries from all over the country. And um, Avery entered hers. Uh, Miss Olson put this up as an enrichment activity on Google Classroom, as many teachers do, to try and push students a little further. And um, Avery just took this and ran with it, did an amazing job, and um, landed herself in the top 10 of all poetry entries in the nation. Uh, so we are proud to recognize Avery. Um, this is an amazing piece of work that she's put together. Um, I recently heard her say that this is one of her first real poems, but that she enjoyed doing it so much she's going to continue to write poetry. So, not only are we proud that she represents Connecticut so well and Webb and Weathersfield so well, but we're even more proud that this might have launched a, uh, a really rich writing career and poetry career for her as well. Um, so she's gonna be featured in Weathersfield Life um, in the coming months. We just had a reporter out to the school. Uh, so she's getting a lot of accolades as she well deserves. So uh, we thought it'd be great for her tonight to um, share her poem with us all. I think uh, especially during these, uh, these days of winter, that we've experienced her poem brings us to a happy time of being outside with loved ones. And through her words, I, I find that um, she almost transforms me to that place. So I'm looking forward to hearing it again. And uh, Avery, I will turn the floor over to you. Ready? You can do it. Got it? You can do it. No? Okay. So Avery, Avery's a little bit nervous, so I'll read her poem for her. It's called Fishing with Dad. Grab my pole. Time to roll. We're going to the fishing hole. I cast my worm and wait for a bite. I make sure that my lines are tight. With the sun in my face, the wind in my hair, I start to wonder if anything is out there. My rod starts to jerk. Now I get to work. I reel it in slow, I do not let go. I see it's a bass and start to spin fast. Good catch, says my dad, this fishing trip was rad. We pack all the gear, then start to head home and I reach in my bag and write this poem. Very good. That was fantastic. 
Yes, our next poet laureate. Great, Great poem. Job. Great job. Excellent work, Avery. Well done. All right, Avery, thank you so much for joining us. And we can't wait to see your poem in Weathersfield Life. And we're looking, the next one is about gymnastics, I understand. So we can't wait to hear that one as well. So thank you, Avery. We're very proud of you. You should be proud of yourself. And uh, thank you to the Board of Ed for welcoming us here to recognize her. Thank you, Avery. Great thank job. You. Thank you. Great job, thank Avery. Great Great job. All right. Mr. Emmett, is that all for student staff? Yes. Yes, sir. Excellent. Thank you. Moving on to minutes. Um, Mr. Michaels, I believe you have a motion for us. I'd like to make a motion to approve the February 18th, 2021 Special Education Board of Ed meeting minutes. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Riley. Any questions or comments? Seeing none with a motion and a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. Mr. Michaels, I believe you have another motion for us. Let's make a motion to approve the February 22nd, 2021 uh, minutes from the special board of education meeting. Do we have a second? Second. second. Thank you, Mr. Cassio. Any questions or comments? Seeing none with a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Riley, I believe you have a motion for us. To make a motion to approve the February 23rd, 2021 regular Board of Education meeting minutes. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Michaels. Any comments, questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes, thank you. Moving on to public comment. We had no emails. Mr. Emmett, anyone on the phone? I have no one in the queue, Mr. Carey. Excellent. Public comment is now closed. Moving on to communications. Mr. Emmett. Thank you again, Mr. Carey. Good evening, everyone. A couple of items for you uh, this evening. I certainly want to bring everybody up to speed on the um, outstanding effort that the Weathersfield Public Schools put forward in partnering with the Hartford Healthcare Group uh, to provide vaccination clinics for our staff. Um, on Friday and on Sunday of this past week, um, we were fortunate to allow all of our staff, our paid Weathersfield employees, our volunteer coaches, our employees contracted through Chartwells, our employees contracted through Autumn Transportation, the opportunity to go to the Xfinity Center and receive the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. In addition to that, the state had asked districts to reach out to private and parochial schools, as well as licensed daycares and preschools uh, in our towns. Um, I am very pleased to report that we also included our friends from Corpus Christi, as well as reaching out to all of our licensed daycare facilities and preschool facilities throughout Weathersfield to provide them the opportunity to get the vaccine as well. Um, we had very good participation. Uh, I will say that yesterday was a little dicey. We had uh, 27 fail to fills. So we definitely had some impact with regard to uh, reactions from staff. But uh, again, principals did a remarkable job of reallocating staff to make sure that our classrooms were covered. Um, at this point in time, I did let staff know today that Hartford Healthcare has reached out again. Uh, and they will have a clinic for educators uh, this coming Saturday uh, at the Health Hartford Healthcare facility at 1290 Silas Dean Highway. So anybody that was unable to get a vaccine last week or did not want to get Johnson & Johnson will have the opportunity this Saturday to get uh, the Pfizer vaccine. So um, we feel that this is a step in the right direction to making sure our staff is safe and aligns absolutely perfectly with our efforts to fully reopen this district. I'll have more information with regard to the reopening plan a little bit later on in the meeting. Uh, also this evening, I will be uh, sharing with the community my, my proposed budget for the 2021-2022 school year. Um, as you saw earlier in the agenda, we've had a series of budget workshops. Um, so the information forthcoming uh, has certainly been out, but uh, we'll get into some detail and hopefully get approval for this budget so that we can send it on its way to uh, town council. 
I do want to remind uh, parents at the elementary level, please, 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 to be patient around drop off and pickup time during the um, mornings and the afternoons. We have seen a significantly increased amount of traffic and we have seen a lot of behavior that is unsafe for kids. Uh, Mike Barabalt, our interim security director, has worked with the Wethersfield Police Department to try and get additional patrols out. And we're actually going to be working with our SROs to be able to get them over to help with uh, traffic control. But we're seeing a lot of parents dropping kids off and having kids cross the street outside of crosswalks. It's dangerous. It's, it's unsafe. And it really, really needs to change. So um, if our parents can be um, aware of that and uh, can respond appropriately, we'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, and then again, finally this evening, you have a, an action item before you that I am extraordinarily proud to bring forward. Um, and that is a partnership with CREC to participate in a teacher residency program that will uh, go to great lengths to increase the diversity within our uh, teaching ranks for the Wethersfield Public Schools. So look forward to talking further about that uh, this evening. And with that, that's communications. Thank you, Mr. Emmett. Moving on to recommended action items. Mr. Michaels, I believe you have a motion for us. Thank you, Mr. Carey. I'd like to move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve the operating budget for the 2021-2022 school year as presented by the administration in the amount of $58,437,718. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lesser. And Mr. Emmett and Mr. Kazaka, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Mr. Carey. Um, as you can see, uh, this budget presentation, you're going to see a lot of masks. Uh, and I will say thank you very much to Miss Eastwood. This was uh, her classroom I visited right before we uh, reopened in the hybrid model back in uh, early September. We already have slides. Again, folks, if you are not muted, if you could please mute your mics, I'd appreciate it. Now spring break. Oh. All right. As you can see here, our adopted 2021 budget uh, was $56,902,759. My proposed budget for the 2021-2022 school year is $58,437,718. This represents an increase over the current operating budget of $1,534,000. $959. It is a percentage increase of 2.70% over the current operating budget. And again, with the photos, heartfelt thanks to all of our schools that were able to step up and provide uh, photos. You can definitely see the impact of the pandemic over the course of this past year. All right. And here's a slide that we show on a yearly basis. Um, this is the summary by object for 2021-2022. Um, as has been the case in previous years, the bulk of our budget is made up of personal services salaries as well as personal services benefits. And again, our changes for 2021-2022 by major object. You're seeing the increase primarily contractual obligations for salary benefits. We see a slight increase of 2% uh, for health insurance for the upcoming year. And then you see some areas where we will see uh, decreases in the budget, including other purchase services, professional and technical services, supplies, purchase property services, and miscellaneous. And again, a slight increase in property of 39,200. Okay, so our, our friends at uh, the Highcrest Elementary School. And again, uh, WFT contractual step increases, uh, and this does retain all positions. It includes a summer enrichment program as well. I will say that it is my intention to utilize the funding in the summer enrichment program to participate in the correct teacher residency program. I intend to use ESSER funding to support our summer enrichment program. We're also requesting uh, two positions that are administrative positions. One is a curriculum uh, instructional supervisor for grades seven through 12. And then the second is an additional special education supervisor. 
These are two critical roles that have been unfunded for several years. Our curriculum instructional supervisor was one of two positions that we had in previous budgets and we lost uh, due to budget decreases. And the special education supervisor was a position that we had requested when we added the STRIVE and ABA programs. Uh, and we were not successful in being able to add that particular position. I want to talk a little bit about the um, specialized programs. Um, several years back, the board had charged us with developing programs that keep kids in Wethersfield and decrease the large amount of funding going out to private facilities. So what you can see here by this graph is you can see our ABA programming, ap Applied Behavior Analysis, and our STRIVE program for students with emotional uh, needs. And you can see the impact. You have 26 students in the ABA program and we have four students in the STRIVE program. That is 30 students that had the potential of going to out of district placements. And again, Mr. Kazaka used a conservative outplacement cost and that cost is just tuition, does not take into account transportation. And you can see what our net projected savings were with the ABA program, $1,591,371. And for our STRIVE program, saving in tuition, $134,325. And what's most important here is these are our students. They are Weathersfield residents and they are home. They are in their own district schools, which is absolutely what you want. So let's talk about some of the additional drivers. Uh, again, uh, some of these drivers are ones that you see every year. Um, we have the OPEB contribution. Uh, this is an increase per funding policy of $78,000. Uh, OPEB is other post-employment benefits um, and it is a uh, defined uh, pension program that we participate in. We have a small number of our employees that participate in that particular program. Again, we see an employer increase to the defined benefit and defined contribution pension plans and an increase on in health insurance based on a 2% premium increase. This is far less than our increase last year, which was in the neighborhood of approximately 13%. And it's important to note that for the 2020-2021 health insurance budget, um, we reduced at 625,000 due to budget savings that we returned to the town of Wethersfield after last fiscal year. Again, you can see here, here's what a classroom looks like, socially distanced. There's our one-to-one -one initiative in, or in, in perfect order right there. Again, here are a couple of other drivers with regard to uh, special education contracted consultation services. We see a decrease here. And we're also looking to uh, reduce legal services in both human resources and special education. Purchase property services. Here's another driver here. We're projecting a decrease in instructional repairs and maintenance. Again, with our schools being in the hybrid model, um, we have not seen the typical wear and tear on our smart boards that we normally would see. And again, our current lease obligations for Chromebooks, copiers, and the Transition Academy remain unchanged for 2021, 2022. Again, here's another uh, driver where we're expecting some significant savings. Uh, this is in regard to transportation. We are seeing a projected consolidation and decrease in sped routes, which will net us $306,277. Uh, one thing that we do see, um, we make sure that we take into account what our teachers are looking for with regard to software and licenses as we um, enhance what we've done from a technology standpoint. So we're looking at an increase of $42,246 for software and licenses for new programs to be used for students. And again, we're looking at an anticipated net decrease in tuition costs for our magnet schools, special education, and VOAG um, uh, attendance of $47,703. Uh, here in this particular photo, you can see our music teachers uh, in action. This was a, uh, a music performance that they had done completely virtually utilizing technology. And uh, again, we've been extraordinarily resourceful over the past year. And uh, in this particular uh, driver line, projected decrease in instructional supplies throughout the district. We're looking at a modest decrease of 22,647. 
We're seeing an uh, anticipated decrease of new and replacement textbooks, 38,790. Uh, we do see an increase coming in technology supplies related to infrastructure and instruction. Again, um, as you may have heard during the course of the year, um, we do a lot of work behind the scenes with regard to network, with regard to bandwidth and making sure that we have all of the technology needs on the back end to make sure our network runs efficiently and most importantly is safe and secure. We are expecting uh, an increase for costs associated with replacement devices, staff desktops, student Chromebooks, and infrastructure. Again, additional access points and servers as we have more and more machines on our network. Um, one of the things that's important to note with the staff desktops, these staff desktops uh, have been in the classrooms uh, for probably about eight years. Um, we've done multiple upgrades to operating systems. But again, some of them are getting to the point where they are beyond their useful life. And again, this is one you see every year. Our budget drives our vision. We're inclusive. We're committed to lifelong learning. We're using our knowledge and skills beyond the walls of the school. And we're looking for opportunities for personalized learning. Our educators are innovative, tenacious, and they are catalysts for change and growth. Our family partners are connected, collaborative, and constructive. Our students, our most important asset, are curious, emotionally intelligent, and independent. And our Board of Education and community partners are engaged, mentoring, and resourceful. So the draft budget document uh, has been made available to the Board of Ed and the public as of January 28th. It's up on our website. We've had a series of three budget workshops. Those workshops took place on February 10th, February 18th, and February 22nd. Again, I'm before you this evening on March 9th to present uh, this budget to you. Again, the approved Board of Ed budget must be forwarded to the town prior to March 15th, 2021. Uh, again, at this point in time, I had a conversation with Town Manager Evans uh, this evening before the uh, Board of Education meeting. He has his agenda setting meeting uh, tomorrow with the uh, Town Council. So uh, we will determine for sure if we'll be presenting to Council on March 15th. And again, the town budget hearing, usually the third Monday in the month of April, um, where the town will have the opportunity to weigh in on both the town as well as the Board of Ed budgets. And again, town council notifies Board of Ed by the, of the budget allocation um, in May of 2021. And with that, I am ready for any questions that you may have. Any board members with questions or comments? Mr. Lesser. Um, first off, uh, thank you, Michael, and thank you, Matt, for all the work in putting the budget together and everyone else that participated. And um, I think it's a job well done, certainly planned to support the budget. Michael, my question is, in terms of the um, $1.9 trillion uh, bill that passed uh, recently in Washington, I guess the American Rescue Plan, there's a lot of money earmarked for education, a lot supposed to come to Connecticut and the local schools. Um, I don't think we have a sense of how much yet, maybe you do, but have you have some thoughts about where that money could be used as maybe perhaps for the summer program and other things, but just the comments on with that recently passed uh, funds, how we might plan to allocate them. Yeah. Michael, can I answer that real quick part of it? Can Fine. you stole my thunder? for my board comments. So John Larson called me last week. He asked for my phone number and he uh, informed me that right now it looked like Weathersfield Board of Ed is gonna get about 2.7 million of that money that just passed. And he called me in between uh, committee meetings to let me know that, and we had a nice conversation. So I was very uh, excited to hear that we're getting more money on top of what we've already gotten. So, but now that you stole my board comment thunder, Michael, you can answer the rest of it. <laughs> That's so, great yeah, news, John. Good conversation with John Larson. Great so news, John, Chuck. I need clarification here. Is this in, in addition, Chuck, to the 1.2 we got for the ESSER fund? Correct, Ms. Paradise. Okay. So the, the package that's about to be passed by the House tomorrow right. should right. include somewhere around 2.7 million for the that. board itself. And then there's okay. money for the town as well. But that's okay. just for us. Thank you for the clarification. No problem. Mr. Emmett, you can answer about where, where you're spending the money. Yeah, th thank you. With regard to the uh, the ESSER funds, Ken, we're working on the needs assessment right now. 
uh, that the state requires with the submission of this uh, grant. The grant opened up uh, this past Thursday, so we are working on it. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the budget, budget presentation, one of the intents of using this ESSER funding is to support the uh, enhanced summer school. Uh, you know, we certainly see the need to accelerate learning and make up for lost learning. So we're expanding our summer school opportunities. So we'll use ESSER for that. Another one of the aspects that we're looking at is the social emotional learning component. Um, you know, this was certainly a traumatic event for our students. It was a traumatic event for our staff as well. So we'll be looking to provide that support there. And we're also looking for other innovative ways where we can enhance the, the efforts with regard to SRBI, scientifically research-based interventions, and making sure that we're bringing kids in where they are and helping to accelerate their growth. Um, so from that perspective, you know, we look to be able to allocate this money. We wanna be careful with regard to allocating it solely to staff because we know what's happened in the past with the cliff. You've got the grant money, it's there, and then the grant money goes away and we are unable to maintain those positions. So um, we've taken a, a team approach. So I've taken input from all of our principals as well as our department leaders uh, to identify ways that we can best invest that money in our kids. Thank you, Michael. And thank you, Chuck, for that information. Chuck, I have a question and to Michael. Michael, how do we protect that money that's coming to us from our budget? In other words, I don't want to see our budget decreased because we're getting rescue money. Yeah, from, from my understanding with uh, previous conversations with the State Department of Education, it was my understanding where it is not explicitly stated um, in, in the grant, it is supposed to be a supplement, not a supplant. And I'm certainly hopeful that we, we can move in that direction. Uh, and again, with the uh, additional funding that's coming forward, um, I don't have any parameters on that funding yet, so I don't know how it may be spent. Um, so we're going to have to see how that plays out when uh, that uh, bill is voted on. I have a thought here. Chuck, may I speak? Y yes, Ms. Paradise. Um, Mike Emmett, I wrote that you want to enhance SRBI with some of the ESSER funds, and that's a great opportunity, I think. But I also see down the road what you talk about as um, future, and I just want to know that if we put if we put some of this money to enhance it, will there be somebody to take the decisions made on how to enhance? Will there be personnel to do that? You know, and then, like you say, then a couple of years later, it's cut again. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying, if we spend money to identify SRBI needs, which is absolutely wonderful, my thoughts, but how will, when we identify them, who's going to put them in place? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's another, I'm not asking for an answer right now, Michael. I'm just saying that there's, that needs to go one more step and uh, identify as our being uh, needs. We need to also have, well, then if we find this is a way to identify them, how are we, who's going to take the brains and do it? Yeah, and that's you bring up a very, very good point. And I think that part of the process here, Elaine, is to take a look at how we would oh, absolutely not only the funding, but how are you going to allocate the, the people? And yes. What, you know, do we bring in tutors? Do we bring mm -hmm. in, we talked today at our administrative team meeting about, you know, potentially having an SRBA coordinator in each school. It's an additional layer of support to help the classroom teacher to provide additional instructional supports to kids. Well, so, that's where my concern lands. If we identify another SRBI level or strategy or something, who's going to put it in place? They already have so much to do, the classroom teacher. So it's just my thoughts to keep in your discussions, Mike, as you go on. Thank you. Any other questions or comments about the budget? Excellent. Thank you, Michael and Matt, for all your hard work. Thank you, Mr. Michaels, for leading the charge for finance. Thank you, Sally and John, for your wonderful presentation on the need of those two new administrators. And seeing no more discussion and a motion, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? abstention motion passes thank you everyone moving on mr cassio you have a motion for us i certainly do chuck i would move that the weathersfield board of education approve the district's participation in the correct teacher residency program for 2021 2022 school year do we have a second second, second. thank you kelly can whoever you want to give it to ellen give it to kelly Ty goes to Kelly, excellent. Mr. Emmett. 
Yeah, I, I just want to say that I think that this participation in this program is long overdue. Um, you know, again, I think that we see our uh, district becoming increasingly diverse. And as we're seeing an increasingly diverse student population, our staff population has not been able to keep up. And I think that this is a great way to be able to increase the diversity within our staff. Um, it is a very intensive program, uh, but it is a program that I truly believe in because I think it breaks down some of the barriers to getting certified. Um, this is a program, unfortunately, only at the elementary level, so I can't uh, share the wealth to middle and high school. Um, I've talked to two principals already, and both are very interested in uh, welcoming a, a teacher resident. And obviously, this is going to uh, call upon our teacher leaders, uh, two of whom will serve as mentors uh, to our residents. And down the road, we are bringing in a permanent uh, teacher to the Weathersfield Public Schools. And I think that that's a step in the right direction. So I hope you'll support this. Any questions, Ms. Paradise? Um, Michael, I'm a little, and Matthew, you're gonna help me here with, I'm not sure I understand this correctly. Michael, when it says um, residents benefit package in your letter that came out from, or came from dear Mr. Mrs. Magos, what is a resident benefit package and what does that cost for us? I, I read you, you allocated 65750 for this position. Correct. 20 of that is paid to the resident teacher. I think I've got that right, Matthew, right? 4000 is an evaluation stipend. 4000 for an evaluation. I'm not sure what that means. Um, then it says resident benefit package. What? number are we assigning to a resident benefit resident package? 6,000 goes to the teacher that's the mentor, if I read that correctly, and 10,700 goes to a fee paid to CREC for a teacher resident. Correct. Now, I understand the fee to CREC and I understand the, but all that, the number, there's no number next to resident and I total 48,000. And Matthew, can you clarify why we're budgeting 65 for that? Just, just, for my sake. I believe Mr. Emmett has all the details, but that's the total cost of the program through CREC. Okay, so something's missing here in this line then well, from the letter, dear Mrs. Magos, because that only totals 48,000. And I don't, but it doesn't give a number next to residence benefit package. It's, Michael, these people are not, are these people gonna be like, let's just say I graduated with a biology degree mm -hmm. and now I'm gonna become a teacher. Is yeah. that how we're picking them? So do I have to be a Weathersfield resident to be in this program? You do not. Okay, so what's a re resident benefit package it's, in this it's, list? Um, it's, it's a you may not have the answer right now, but. Yeah, it's, it's a benefit package for the teacher in residence. Oh, so like health insurance? It's health insurance. Oh, I've never even crossed my mind, sorry. <laughs> Okay, I understand the numbers. <laughs> it's, it's tough to quantify it right now because you don't know if it's going to be a right. single or if it's going to be a family. So sure. that, that's I why. It. It's why. never hit me that it was benefits like that. Right. Well, I'm thinking student teacher years ago. Okay, thanks, Mike. And Elaine, just I want to add to something because you mentioned whether school residents. Certainly what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking within our district to see if we have staff members, sure. say paraeducators or behavior specialists that um, have a bachelor's degree that may mm -hmm. take that next step. So we're certainly gonna look from within. Um, again, upon approval this evening, I do have a meeting scheduled with CREC actually tomorrow at 10 o'clock uh, to talk about next steps with regard to this program. And, and if I'm understanding it correctly, if this person masters all these steps, including a, do they, will they be asked to take the um, praxis? They, yes. they will. yes, they will. And then they will uh, be fully certified. And then we will okay. be able to hire them full time as a Weathersfield certified teacher. Okay. And if we don't have a spot, you're going to talk to districts around us. Is that what the way I read the letter correctly? That is absolutely correct. And okay. based on our experience, Elaine, we have yet to have a year where I have not had at least uh, right. three retired. I've been along, on, on this boat a long time. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Any other questions or comments? Just a comment. I've been on CREC. Yes, Ms. Granano. And I've been on CREC for a number of years, and they've been trying for a number of years to come up with a program to diversify the staff um, of all the schools in the CREC programs. And this is the one that seems to work for both sides, for the school systems 
and for candidates to get into um, education. Um, so I know most towns have signed up and Weathersfield is now gonna be one of them. Thanks, Bobby. Excellent, thank you. Anyone else? All right, seeing none with a motion in a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Moving on, uh, reports and discussion items. Mr. Emmett, reopening update. Thank you. Yes, uh, I just want to give everybody an update with regard to where we're at uh, concerning reopening. Um, we are now two weeks beyond our reopening for grades four through six. So we are now um, reopened for a full month now, grades pre-K through six. Um, up to this point in time, we've had a grand total of four positive cases across the entire elementary uh, environment, and we've had one staff case. Uh, so our numbers continue to look favorable at this point in time. And again, I can't stress enough the mitigation strategies, and we have a suite of them from you know, hygiene, frequent hand washing, uh, plenty of hand sanitizer. Um, we've seen a decrease in the uh, amount of social distance, but we have seen excellent compliance with mask wearing. So we're gonna to continue to monitor. Um, obviously we're keeping an eye on what our ventilation systems look like. Uh, ventilation thankfully has not been an issue. Uh, we did have a heating unit go down over at uh, Charles right yesterday morning and physical services was right over to fix it within 15 minutes. So um, we have been very fortunate there. In addition with the weather getting a little nicer, I can attest to the fact that uh, Hanmer School was a buzz with kids out at recess running around taking those mask breaks. So it definitely uh, is getting better in the weather department. Uh, moving forward, uh, last Tuesday, the reopening committee met and we focused in on uh, the middle and the high school and how we're going to reopen at, at those levels. So I'm very pleased to report as a follow-up to my communication to the community last week that we will welcome back our freshmen and our sophomores on Monday, March 15th. We will welcome back our seventh and eighth grade students at Silas Dean Middle School on Monday, March 22nd. And then we will welcome back our juniors and seniors to Weatherseal High School on Monday, March 29th. So again, this is a phased approach that uh, has garnered the support of Charles Brown at the Central Connecticut Health District. Um, at this point in time, the high school and the middle school are both working on logistical plans. Um, Amazingly, some of our ninth graders um, have not been in the high school and are going to need a tour so that they can understand where they need to go. Uh, from the perspective of our 11th and 12th graders, you know, having them go out a little bit later um, and return a little later, we looked at the data and we found that the bulk of our student cases at Weathersfield High School have been seniors and, and some juniors. And we think that that's part and parcel to the mobility, you know, being able to drive, being able to, you know, being out working. Um, so we're hopeful that our numbers stay low. Um, we had three days in a row last week where we did not have a case. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, no reported cases. Um, I did uh, end up over the past uh, three days or past two days, we've had a couple of cases come in among staff, but again, still not seeing the spread. So we're looking forward to seeing our middle and our high school kids come back. And uh, the piece with remote learning, as you know, in our March calendar, we continue to have the remote Wednesdays. Uh, we do see those uh, phasing out in the month of March. And uh, we've had some conversation with both administrators and teachers about how we go about doing that. Right now, at this point in time, we think that the um, Wednesdays are remaining important. So for example, tomorrow, um, physical services is going to be working on removing a, uh, an interior oil tank at Silas Dean. Uh, and then we want to make sure that we provide both the middle and the high school enough flexibility for making room adjustments. Um, but I do see us being five days a week um, after April vacation. Oh, good. Oh. Again, and that's, let's, let me preface this, folks, by saying we have to be flexible. We have to continue to monitor the numbers. You know, obviously we're looking at the uh, variant, the UK variant. As of today, we have 81 cases of the UK variant reported in Connecticut. Uh, there are two cases of the South African strain that have been reported in Connecticut. And uh, at this point, the Brazilian strain, they have found no cases in Connecticut. So we are continuing to monitor. And you know, when you look at our data, as of last Thursday, the 14 day rolling average for us was down to 15.1. And that's just one-tenth of a point away from getting out of red alert and being back into orange. 
So we are certainly moving in the right direction. Again, I can't say enough for our students, um, Tiago and, and everybody at the high school. The mass compliance has been exceptional. Uh, you know, we've been able to get through uh, winter sports with the exception of we lost one team to quarantine. Uh, but, you know, basketball has survived uh, and, you know, we're getting ready for tournament time. So and our hockey team will be back before the end of the year. So we'll get back there. Well, one question, Michael. Yes. When, let's just I got today that one staff member was um, identified. Now, I think in your COVID update today, did I read that correctly? One staff member? But yes. anyway, last in the building, March 8th, I think. Um, Michael, if a staff member was looked like a classroom teacher like Bobby and I, is that whole class asked to stay home now 10 days? It, it depends. What will happen, Elaine, is they'll go back through and they'll do contact tracing. So they okay. will look to see if that individual was within six feet of okay. students for more for a cumulative amount of time, okay. 15 minutes. Okay. Just curious, when I saw one staff member, I said, oh, that's good news, but I want to know what happens to the class. Thanks, Mike. Yep, you're welcome. And what we do, Elaine, just so you know, within our dashboard, we do keep a running record also of quarantines um, so that, you know, and again, this has been the reality I know at Hanmer and most recently at Webb, um, when you have more kids in the room and you're, you're, yes, you're cohorting those kids, but there are more kids in the room, there are more kids that ultimately have to quarantine, so. Yeah. That's Makes the, sense. That's the downside. Yep. Any other questions, comments? Excellent. Mr. Lesser and I have the fortune of sitting on that reopening committee, and I will tell you, the middle school and high school teachers were very happy to start transitioning the kids back full time. So it was this a great. Scary. Oh, uh, I apologize. Do you mind if I interject for a second? No problem, sir. Go what? ahead. So um, the reopening plan has been actually a hot topic of discussion among juniors and seniors, particularly with seniors. And the general consensus that I've gathered is that a lot of seniors are planning on coming back. So for me, this is very exciting news to see more faces and more uh, more people in the building. So thank you. Good. Cannot wait. Excellent. Good to hear. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. Moving on. Announcements and information. Please check your packet. If there's a committee meeting that you can't make, please let the chair of the committee know. Um, Board of Ed meetings held. Weathersfield Early Childhood Collabor Collaborative, the WEC 3821, Miss Granado. Okay, we had our uh, Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative met on Monday, March 8th as a virtual meeting. Michael and I both attended. It was um, had quite a few people there. The mission of WEC is that all Weathersfield children, birth to eight, are healthy, developmentally successful learners and connected to the community. Um, the meeting started with the most important information that this um, committee works with, and that is, and I quote, at birth, the average baby's brain is about a quarter of the size of the average adult brain. Incredibly, it doubles in size in the first year. It keeps growing to about 80% of adult size by age three and 90% nearly full grown by age five. And what they often hear at WEC from the Weathersfield Public School staff they will be told if we only had reached them sooner. And that's what WEC really does. And Kim Bobbin is fabulous for what she calls one coffee at a time. And she has so many people that we can use as um, resources for our early childhood. And they were there on Monday. The meeting focused on these available resources that families can utilize from WEC Kim Bobbin has connected families with many early childhood specialists and organizations. Um, at the meeting, we heard that our PEP group, which is a UConn group, um, is working again. It empowers parents. The Office of Early Childhood has a new partnership with WEC to offer the Sparkle app free. It sounds kind of funny and cute, but what it is is a developmental um, app, which shows you if your child is developmentally growing appropriately. Um, I'm sure many people, once they get a hold of it, are, uh, they can find anything that's wrong. Um, this app will show the developmental stages of our youngest citizens and provide help when needed. Kim Bobbin and Sablania Smith um, we'll be representing the Connecticut Association for Adult and Continuing Education. Um, this topic is how we adapt <clears throat> family literacy 
for virtual learning? How do you teach English to infants, toddlers, and preschoolers and their caregivers? Also, our guest speaker was Lisa Maifka from Stronger Families, Stronger Futures. It's a family-centered network of providers who serve prenatal caregivers or those who have children zero through five years of age. Free to families in Wethersfield is Early Head Start, ABC, PALS, and Wethersfield uh, families can also access home visiting programs through UConn. Uh, the town also has Wethersfield Park and Rec and Social and Youth Services provide services for families. Wethersfield Public School provides Wethersfield Adult Ed programs. The YMCA has their listening tour on race and equity. Um, Heather Jemenzes, a town, new town parent, has a program for children's yoga and mindfulness. Uh, Favor, which was presented by Jeanette Hernandez, is a free service for parents to empower families so they can effectively advocate on behalf of their children. And lastly, we had Whitney Simmons, an early childhood consultant, um, which she has a project that is free for Wethersfield parents, preschoolers, and early care and education providers. Jonathan Singham is a foster care recruiter and he's focused on finding new foster care families. He's building a network in the greater Hartford area with families who might consider being a foster care parent. All these resources can be utilized by connecting to the WEC website or by contacting our WEC coordinator, Kim Bobbin. It's amazing how that group has grown. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Granato. Meeting scheduled, the Memorial Day Parade Committee is on 310-21 at 7.15. The Correct Council is at 317-21 at 11.30 in the morning. Student Programs and Services is 317-21 at 6.30 p.m. Finance and Operations Committee meeting is 323-21 at 6 p.m. There is no unfinished business. Public comment, Mr. Emmer, anyone on the phone? I have no one in the queue, Mr. Carey. All right, public comment is closed. Moving on to board comment. Any board members wishing to make comment? Chuck, I have a comment. Yes, Mr. Cassio. First of all, I just want to thank the uh, administration and the work that they did on this year's budget, as well as the committee. Great job. Um, it's never enough, but it's a good start. And uh, we can only hope for the best at this point. The other uh, thing I just wanted to give Avery a Great congratulations. What a talent and a gift. And I can't wait to see her uh, next poem with gymnastics. But more importantly, um, um, uh, it really has nothing to do with the schools and the children inside. It has to do with the community. And uh, if you walk around our schools um, on a given time when you have some free moments, the sidewalks, I don't know if we as a town uh, can put a poop patrol up. There's more uh, waste from animals on the grounds for children to step in. So I don't know if we, uh, being the chair of facilities or through the superintendent, can send a message out. Do we need a poop bag container for people to at least pick it up? I don't know. It, it has, it's not relevant to the board meeting, but being on facilities, I do take note to the grounds. And it's just not one particular school. John, I walk, I walk the web line, the web school line there in front where the park, where the line of parents line up and it's disgusting. You're absolutely right. But what I had at my house done was I had those signs put up that are on like the Broad Street Green, this ordinance, uh, whatever, whatever the, it says, like on the green in front of the house I grew up with, there's a sign that has an ordinance number and uses a pooper scooper law or something like that. So we could put signage up along that, um, what do you call that, median or the, whatever it is between the sidewalk and the road to remind people that it is against the law. There is no signage between when you, where you pull in for the preschool all the way to the corner of uh, Willow and Wells. I think we got to start somewhere because I agree with you 100%. I'm jumping over turds like crazy and it's, they're miss, trying to miss the puddles with this thaw. It, it's a mess and it needs to be addressed. I agree. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Castillo and Ms. Paradise. Anyone else? Yes, Tiago. I'll be glad to call the town council on that. If you want me to, <laughs> I'll call them. I'll All right, them thank you, Ms. Paradise. Bye. Tiago, you're up. So just to give it like a quick senior update, um, for the most part, what's been on the seniors' minds for at least the, the several seniors I've talked to is the uh, is prom and frankly, the situation with prom. So two weeks ago, uh, myself and the other senior class officers got together and we held a uh, like a virtual town meeting where we invited all the seniors to share their, their comments, their concerns, or to listen in on like the status. So out of the meeting, we got some great feedback, some great, uh, I guess some ideas and some great potential. But all in all, uh, I just grained um, like a better understanding of where my class's mind is uh, currently at. Many of the seniors, uh, they just want something prom or something prom like. And all the seniors I talk to absolutely understand that this is a very fluid situation and that decisions need to be made based upon health and whatnot. But in the past few months, I've definitely noticed um, definitely an emotional toll, uh, toll on my classmates. Uh, I've seen many of my classmates kind of check out of school. Uh, I've definitely noticed motivation decrease in general morale. And I feel like an event like prom or something prom-like or another senior event could most definitely increase morale, boost motivation to re-engage school, whatever months we have left. And again, this decision needs to come from the governor and also from Mr. Emmett. And all the seniors understand this is a fluid situation, but we just need to stay optimistic. And again, I, I think something like prom or another senior event would definitely boost morale, much like the reopening plan, I think, will. So that, that's it for uh, the update. So thank you. Thank you, Tiago. Yeah, Tiago, I just want to speak to that. Um, you know, both prom as well as graduation are on our minds as well. Um, and we continue to see changes with regard to um, expectations at the state level. Um, every Tuesday uh, morning at 8 a.m., it is uh, Health and Safety Tuesday. And I do a virtual call with the Department of Public Health as well as the State Department of Education. And that was one of the things that was discussed today. And, you know, which of the guideline changes impact private facilities, which are school related? And you know, from my perspective, we've gone a year. I mean, it's essentially a year this Thursday where I had to make that decision to close. Um, the one thing we wanna do is provide you with the best possible experience. But as you said, we wanna make sure we do it as safely as possible. So um, we're looking at graduation planning. It's like dual graduations. You know, Yes, I did uh, look to put a deposit down on chairs for Cove Park. I'm thinking optimistically, but mm -hmm. I'm also knowing full well that everybody last year absolutely loved the family parade, uh, the car parade. So that's something that we're looking at as well. So um, as we get additional guidance that comes from the state, I will make sure that it gets out to you, the students, as well as your class advisor. So um, we'll do everything we can to make it a memorable experience for all of you. So and I appreciate your patience. Thank you, Mr. Emmett. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other board members? Excellent. I just want to thank Mr. Emmett for his hard work to get the vaccine clinic for our staff. And uh, if people don't realize how much work it took behind the scenes. So I do, we do appreciate it, Mr. Emmett. And as always, we know you value everyone's safety and health. And thank you again. Seeing no other comments, do we have a motion to go to executive session? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I move uh, to leave public session and enter into an executive session at uh, roughly 7.55 p.m. for the purposes of a discussion and possible action on appointment of a principal for Weathersfield High School. Thank you, do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. motion carries. Excellent, we're in executive session, we'll wait till the recording stops.